I serve as a chaplain for the Miami Heat, so serving athletes in that way. And there's um, several other products that and services that I'm rolling out as a part of my business, Coach Kama. And the name Coach Kama came from a conversation I had with some teammates of mine. What's up, guys? I'm doing another Faith of Base podcast. I'm here live at Vice City Kava Bar here in Coral Gables. Well, actually, it's uh, technically Shenandoah, this area, but this is OG Miami Coral Way here. Make sure to get a Kratom Kava drink here at Vice City Kava. I'm going to be talking with a buddy of mine. His name is Trey Morning. He's a really cool guy. He's a fellow brother in Christ. He has a lot of cool things to talk about. Obviously, he has a really interesting point of view. I'm sure you guys are going to like the things that he talks about. This podcast is also sponsored by Physicians Preferred CBD. Make sure to go online and get yourself some CBD. It's good for inflammation, good for homeostasis, like mind and mood balancing. Sometime in the future, we're also going to have Physicians Preferred CBD here at Vice City Kava. So this would be a great place to get that. Also, this podcast is sponsored by faithandbase.com. Make sure to get one of these hats, one of these shirts, one way to support the podcast, which is really, really awesome. And lastly, this podcast is sponsored by Adipose Beef Tallow. Really, really clean stuff. Good for your face, good for your body. You could even eat it. That's how natural it is. It doesn't have any of the harmful preservatives that a lot of skincare products have that dry out your skin, make you break out, bad for your endocrine system. So really clean stuff. So Make sure to get some adipose. But with no further ado, I'm going to have Trey Morning. Awesome, bro. How many angles we got? We got five. Bro. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. Right? Hey, that's, oh <laughs> that's how I roll, bro. What, what's wild is that my light wasn't working, and then this guy had a ring light. So that's, a, that's the way God works, right? That's funny. I had a conversation with What do you mind about podcasting? Oh, yeah? Right on. What was it about? Or, or did, should we should we drop it uh, on the pod? Or? We can drop it on the pod. <laughs> uh, he was just suggesting that you know, I step back into the podcasting space full time. And uh, it was just very timely. He had no idea that I was recording today. You guys want to pray for all start? Yes, please. Yeah? Yeah. Let's do it. Heavenly Father, blessed be your name and Lord's name. Father, thank you for all these opportunities to find strangers that we can now identify as brothers, sanctified yeah. by the same blood. Father, I want to ask for this to be a selfish prayer because mm -hmm. this is an opportunity to reach out a lot of people. Father, I pray that everyone who watches this, some kind of seed is planted, and allow us, Father, to step back and allow the Spirit to water that seed. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, Father, people understand that there is so much fake truth out there, but we need to seek the one true truth. So, Father, thank you for these two gentlemen taking their time, and bless this podcast. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 That's good, man. That's right. What we're, we're two or more gather. Amen. <laughs> uh, on the phone with some of my, uh, my brothers and uh, sending up some prayer requests, man. So this is it's gonna be a prayer filled day. I feel it. Yeah. I'm actually stepping into a fast right now. So this is. What type of fast? Food fast or? Uh, food fast. Are we on right now? Yeah, we're on. We're, we're live. On. All right. Let's go. Um, stepping into a food fast. So, so talk to me about clarity. This. Yeah. Um, so just getting clarity, trying to understand what, what the Lord's will is for me in this season yeah. and be obedient to that. There's so many things that I want and there's so many things that I've seen start to happen. Yeah. And uh, that's cool. I'm like, okay, what is your timing for it? Cause sometimes I, I get excited and sometimes I, I, uh, take steps forward and obedience isn't necessarily about doing what God wants as much as it is about doing what God wants at the time that God wants it to be done. Mm. So, yeah. 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 Sometimes I guess we drag our feet when we get called and then the time might pass us by, yeah. you know, and, um, I resonate with that. Cause I think that I'm somebody that in my mind, I tell myself I'm an overachiever, mm -hmm. but when it comes down to it, it's like, yeah, but you kind of were slacking off a little bit here mm -hmm. or there. And, you know, I think that um, for somebody that likes to call themselves a, a motivated person, I do fall short in a mm -hmm. lot of areas, you know? Mm -hmm. So, um, 
Yeah, it's like the, having awareness in that. But uh, yeah, I think that fasting gives you that clarity, oh, right? Sure. So, so it's uh, just food fast. So only, food only fast, water. I'll, I'll be on water. I don't know how long it's going to be. I have an idea in my mind, but um, I'll keep that between me and, and the big guy. Yeah. Okay. That's yeah. good, man. Well, hopefully, uh, bro, hopefully you seek the clarity that, that you're searching yeah, for. Yeah, bro. Know? I'm, I'm believing that I'll get it. It was actually a breath of fresh air to get the, the revelation from uh, my friend about about fasting and I'm like okay cool like I did some really heavy fasting last season mm. um, I'm about 200 like two, 220 around there mm. now and how tall are you six nine yeah. Yeah. <laughs> when I was uh, living in Brazil towards the end of last year I was at 196 mm. oh so you gained quite a weight yeah quite a bit I gained I gained the weight back since in the two and a half months since I've been back so and, and are you vegan? Because I, no, I met you no, at the so vegan market. To, yeah, but. so I used to eat okay. plant based mostly. Right. Now I'm eating pretty much pretty much anything. There's no real restrictions on my diet, which is great. Yeah. I've been through seasons before where I was really hard on myself in terms of I have to eat this, I can't eat that. You know, and as a professional athlete, there were some things that I learned. Yeah. At the same time, I I have to have grace for myself, and we all have to have grace for ourselves and how we yeah. steward our bodies because even within a budget, right? It's important to have a buffer. Mm. And by planning that, by planning the fact that like, yo, like we're gonna fall short. Yeah. And also knowing that excellence and greatness require a different level of attention. Yeah. And that's something that, that I want, I wouldn't say more than anything, what I want more than anything is to steward the talents that God has given me in the best way possible. And I was actually writing and reading about Matthew 25 today, and this is something that we might have talked about before. In Matthew 25, it's the parable of the talents. It's when Jesus is with the, with the disciples, and he tells them that the kingdom of heaven is like a master who was about to go on a journey, and he leaves three of his servants, talents of gold. Right. To one he leaves five, one he leaves two, and another one he leaves one. And I wrote down a note on my phone. I think my phone's... Oh, let me grab it. Yeah, of course. I wrote down this note today when I was I was looking at this, this sermon. Not the sermon. When I was reading the Word. And uh, I said that investments are not gifts. And a gift is not a loan. Right? So our salvation is a gift. Right? In any gift, there's no expectation that we're meant to get give something back it's not a loan it's not hey you're here you're saved and you owe me something no, right right it's a right. gift it's a free gift of salvation whereas an investment which is what the servants with the five talents two talents and one talent were called to do right that was a loan our gifts per se i want to be careful how i use that word because i just used it before the resources the lord has given us our time our financial resources our relationships and our abilities are loans that the lord has given us so that during our time on earth we use them and store them and multiply them and invest them well and i think it's so powerful in the nlt one of the words that's used to describe what the servant with the five talents did it says that he immediately went and invested his talents and gained five mm. more so as an investor, Investing. he's an he's investors invest, wow, wow, right? Wow, wow, wow. Yeah, and I think it's so interesting in tying this back to to Genesis, which has has been on my mind a lot lately. God, the first thing that God ever tells us about Himself is that He's creative. Mm. In the beginning, God created. Right, right, the right. In the earth. He's the creator. The creator. So that's the first thing he tells us about himself. Uh, There's this really cool teacher. His name's Myron Golden. And he talks a lot about these concepts in business. Yeah, no, and, it's funny. You talk about yeah, so many things. Fine. And uh, somebody, I work in advertising, marketing, mm -hmm. and all this stuff for a lot of part of my career. And a lot of the things, words we throw around is creative. Oh, mm -hmm. I'm a creative guy. I'm creative. I'm creative. But it's like when you call yourself a creator, really what you're doing is you're kind of like taking the place of God, you know, in, in some, some way. So I, I try not to always, because mm -hmm. sometimes I'll say I'm a maker. Yeah. I don't like to say that I'm the creator because it's like yeah. you, you, there is the creator. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Jesus says there are two things that we're not meant to call anybody else, right? Mm. And I 
haven't studied this verse so much, so I don't necessarily know his tone in which he said this. Right. He says, you shouldn't call anybody teacher, for there is one teacher. Yeah. You shouldn't call anybody father. Right. For there's one father. And, and you know, so I grew up Catholic, right? Uh-huh. And you, you, what, do you, what do you call your priest? The, the father, father. Father, yeah. Father this, father yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. So, so yeah, like I don't know the I don't know the context. Like I've learned certain things right, since right. studying the word and going to, to schools for it about the terminology that Jesus would use mm. and how sometimes it was playful. Like right. when he would talk to the when he said to his disciples, like you have little faith. Mm. It was like a, a term. Like a, like it was a like try a, a, almost, a, right? Or no? Essentially. Like, like it was like, like, like a joke. Like a little ribbing almost. Exactly. It was like that. It wasn't like a yo, like yeah. You have no faith. Like, yo, right. what's good with you, right. bro? Like, right. It wasn't right. that at all. It was very playful. Right. So that's what I'm saying. I want to learn the tone that Jesus was speaking with mm. in that context. Because I know for me, and I know that I've learned this way, and I've seen other people do it this way. Yeah. There is a... It's important to hear the Lord the way he's saying it and in his tone because if we go into it with our own interpretation and our mm. own, not interpretation because interpretation is important. Yeah, but our own heart. And our our own, own heart. We mm. hear it. Like if we hear, let's say somebody grows up in a household with an abusive parent, mm. right? Right. And that parent was always like, why are you doing this? And throwing John Glazer or look at say, I like, you know? <laughs> right. Like they might read the word and be like, yo, like this is this is my mom talking. This is my dad talking. Like, this is that tone. Like when Jesus is saying this, that's what he means. And it's so interesting, bro. Cause like the Bible was not written to us. It wasn't even written for us. You know, like the Bible was written to a race of people who were bruised, battered and exiled. And, they were the carriers of God's promise. I mean, Jesus wasn't even a Christian. He was a Jewish, right, <laughs> you right, know? Right, right, right. So it's, it's, it's like this, we, we have to take a step back and humble ourselves and be like, yo, like, this is not my book. Mm. You know, like yeah. Tim Ross talks about this a lot. He talks about how. By putting your own, your own personal yeah. antidotes and your own, all your baggage, yeah. of what you're going through behind the meaning behind it. In in some ways, like, because I, I do feel like the word definitely applies to us for sure. Yeah. It is the governmental document of a heavenly kingdom that is meant to reign here on earth. And us as believers are bringing that kingdom here on earth right. through our actions and through the way we live as being guided by the Holy Spirit. Right. The thing that I was about to say about, about Tim Ross, what he was saying is that the names that are mentioned in the Bible, like, it's not... Bro, like, what are some common names in Miami? Like, right, you know, Mike and Trey. Like, there's no Mike and Trey in the Bible. There's mm-hmm. Mel- Melchizedek and right. um, Balthazar. Uh, I'm pronouncing that wrong, but like, there's some names that like those people don't live around the corner. Like, we don't hear those names often. That's right. from a, for a, diff- a specific group of people who are living in a very specific place, and that book applies to us because we are now adopted into that family. So I feel like, you know, we can, you gotta be careful. You know, I, I'm, I've been in seasons before where I was less mature in my faith and I took, um, not that I took, I would say I took the Bible, I was really strict with my interpretation, mm. almost religious. And religion has to do with religion has to do with achieving and doing certain things in order to achieve our righteousness. But the Bible right. says that our righteousness is, is like dirty rags. There's nothing we can do. It's a gift right. that we, we just accept. So, yeah. Yeah, no, that's, that's, that's cool, man. And, uh, you know, for, for people that don't know, I actually met Trey, uh, at, at the Coconut Grove farmer's market. He was actually wearing a shirt and I don't remember exactly what the message was. It the was. orange one? You were wearing a shirt of faith. It was, it, it, a, was it an orange one, though? I don't you know the exact color? color. I mean, it, it, did it have uh, Philippians, uh, uh, all things through Christ who strengthened me? No, bro. There's, there's a shirt I wear. It's an orange shirt, and it looks like a Heinz bottle, a Heinz ketchup bottle. 
Uh, and it says catch up with Jesus. Catch up with Jesus. You know what's yeah. funny? I have that shirt. You have that shirt. So too. it's not that shirt. It's not that shirt. It's a different shirt. Okay. It's a different you know shirt. what's funny? My 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 wife's twin sister actually bought me that shirt. That's really? like my new favorite shirt. I and and shirt. I love red. And, and the uh -huh. and mine's I the red. I have the orange. Okay. Red. No. <laughs> so, so you were wearing some <laughs> shirt. So he was wearing some shirt. Mm -hmm. And I had this clothing line, Faith and Base. And at the time, I only dropped one shirt. But I was like all about looking at clothes and looking at like street. <laughs> streetwear that's like cool and faith related so then lo and behold this guy's wearing it and, I, and it was just so funny i saw him i took a picture of it and it's funny i don't even remember what it yeah. was but i took a picture of it and then i was like dude like and next thing you know we're chopping it up and we've been like you know friends almost like yeah. i don't even know how like a year it's now or something like that now, yeah. crazy right yeah. but um yeah like with you like every time i talk to you i feel like we have like spiritual conversations oh, but sure, it's yeah. but it's like were you always this? I mean, I think you were alluding a little bit uh, to this. Were you always a spiritual guy, or did you? Or is this a butterfly that you came out of a cocoon and maybe you were you you were on a different path at one so point? So it's always it's always an evolution. It's always a a process of growth and right. development. It's like an unfolding folding, right? Yeah. Um, I I remember coming to Christ at four years old. That is. It's not something I, it's not even bragging about it. It's like the fact that my parents were um, instructing me in the way to go since I was a kid. Mm -hmm. You know, obviously, um, when, I wouldn't say obviously, but like everybody has a room to grow. Right? Yeah. And even parents, right? I didn't grow up going to church per se. There were times when we went to church in different seasons. Yeah. It wasn't something that was like consistent, right? right. Still. My parents did more than enough to make sure that I am where I am today. And by the grace of God, God placed amazing people around me to, to guide me in this path. And I'm the result of prayers of generations and generations, not just in my immediate family. And my mom's fault, excuse me, my dad's foster mother was a prayer warrior. I taught my dad how to navigate the Bible and all that. So wow. she's the one that, you know, she, her prayers are, are manifested in me being here today. Um, I haven't always been like this. I've always been profound and deep and I always knew there was something like, you know, there's something more to this. Right. You know, it felt like I would have conversations with people and it'd be, it would just be, we just talk about some BS. Like we wouldn't really talk about much. It would be service level type stuff. And mm. in that service level type stuff, it would be like, dude, um, I know there's something more. And I remember I got out of a relationship a few years back and came back to Miami and I was I was lost, you know. I got a contract offer to go play overseas and I'm like, bet, like, let me go hoop and forget about what just happened and like pour myself into this. So within a week I had gotten COVID and the team canceled their season because of the pandemic. Mm. So shortly after that, I reached out to one of my homies. I'm like, yo, let's go to church. Like, <laughs> I ain't got nothing to lose. Like, I need to, I need to be in the house. I need to figure out. And it was that rock bottom moment. It was like, okay, like, mm. This is where I started taking. That was twenty twenty. That was twenty 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 one. Man, that it's, was twenty twenty one. And I'm gonna let you continue, but it's funny how that was around the time I was like, quote unquote, waking up too, bro. Mm -hmm. So it's just. Well, was God calling all his warriors in that season or what, Possibly, bro? Because bro, a lot of people so. were waking up around 2020, 2021. Yeah, not, not just yeah. political and all this other stuff, but I'm yeah. talking about spiritually yeah, too. Definitely. You know what I mean? I think about Romans eight twenty eight and how God uses everything to every everything for the good of those who love him, those who are called according to his purpose. And specifically, I see my man, uh, Caleb, behind the bar, nodding his head. He's like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, okay, that's what's up. Family verse, that's tough. That's tough. I want a family verse. That's tough. <laughs> um, but anyways, um, bro, like, if that's true, which I believe it is true 110%, the pandemic was used for, is going to be used for good. You know, mm. it, it was terrible what happened. Lives were lost and all these things. Yeah. Bro, think about how many, think about how many conversations happened. Think about how, like, families actually had to be with one another. Mm. Like, you couldn't run. You couldn't hide at work. You couldn't go to the gym and get more shots up. You had yeah. to be in the crib and like sit face to face with people who you've chosen to go into relationship with, whether it be through marriage or God placed you in their lives to as as family, right? That's real. That's so, real. So I mean, I think confrontation is is so important and Jesus was confrontational bro jesus that's, was a confrontational that, dude. that's my favorite thing a lot of people are are trying to preach the, this hippie jesus but man mm -hmm. 
he he said a lot of stuff that was quote unquote cringe to society. You oh, know for what I mean? Sure. I was so. thinking about some of the stuff today. I forget <laughs> what I thought about specifically, but it was just like the most out of pocket thing that somebody could say today. Jesus was saying it in that context back then. Right. Like we at, at church yesterday at Vu, there was a sermon preached on sex. Sex mm. within context. If you think about some of the stuff that Jesus said about sex, it's like nowadays, like monogamy, I would, you know what? I feel like the extremes within our country are highlighted way too much. Oh, yeah. So oh, yeah. I, I don't oh, yeah. want to yeah, 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 necessarily yeah. do that now. Because like to go out on a limb and say like, yo, liberals are doing this and right, Republican right, and right, conservatives right. are doing this, that right. you're wild and like. Yeah, you got some people who are wilding. Also, the bad news tends to sell. So you gonna put publicity, you gonna film somebody saying some out of pocket stuff and put mm -hmm. that on the mm -hmm. airwaves because mm -hmm. that's how it works and their spiritual that's how it works, association man. through that. So I don't wanna get to that point, but like, dude, I feel like there's an Old Testament story that highlights Jesus so well and I believe it is Caleb. Might have been Caleb. Yeah, Caleb. <laughs> Caleb. I believe it was Caleb. It was. I don't, if it wasn't Caleb, it was uh, who came after. I think it was Caleb. Might have been. So he goes and he's about to fight this battle. He's climbing this hill with his soldiers or something like that. And he comes across this dude. He's like, essentially, he's like, yo, what, like. What set you with? Like you with us or you with them? And he's like, neither. He said, I'm the the general of the I'm the leader of the the heavens armies. And they get on their knees and like, yo, like my fault, like do your thing. And um, they end up siding with him. So it's like I believe they end up siding with him. So we want left and other people want right, or we want right, other people want left. And Jesus is like, I'm right here. And it's not even like a middle ground of Oh, let's make everybody happy. Like, mm. Happiness is a feeling that that could be fleeting. I think yeah. happiness should should be pursued, like right. the movie says for sure. Um, and our thoughts create things, which then create our experiences and things like that. So, at the same time, you know, there's a middle ground that Jesus had, and he was firm on his position. And he's like, "This is what I'm about. This is what I do. This is what I stand for." And it may look like what you do a little bit, and it may look like what you do a little bit. It's not though it it's both and it's attention yeah. right. right which is confrontation it's attention yeah yeah i know you definitely need confrontation but i, I like what you said about putting using your gifts together to uh like that's your investment yeah and and that really resonates with me right about now in this season that i'm in so um from somebody that that made a lot of money with crypto back in 2021 mm -hmm. and then it lost a lot more than than what it was <laughs> yeah and then me having to see it now Excuse me. bitcoin i don't know if you know is at 72,000 so it, everything's gone up significantly yeah. right and if if this happened when it when i when i lost a bunch of money i'd be like a multimillionaire right yeah. now right yeah but everything went the other way and i had to eat a bunch of humble pie and yeah. start from the bottom, right? Yeah. So we're talking about investments. However, what I've been doing, I've been working on my podcast. Look at all these cameras and all this stuff that I'm yeah, setting up. Do that I do. Setup. I do video editing. I'm doing all this stuff. So I'm using all these gifts as an investment for him. Yeah. So it makes me feel good that you said that because, you know, I'm not gonna lie. Sometimes I look in the rearview mirror a little bit, mm -hmm. man. What, what should I have? Do, what could I have done better? Oh, if only I made this choice better. And then I see how everything's blowing up right now. Yeah. And it's just so easy for me to go back to my old past mindset. Yeah. But I got to be like, no, man, like that whole money worship. You know, mm -hmm. there's a reason why there's a bull out in the New York City. Uh, you know, they're, they're doing that bull worship. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> ball or bull or you know what I'm talking I about I think it's interesting man because finances is something that Bible says the love of money is the root of all evil right mm. what it means isn't necessarily that loving money is, is is wrong per se what it's saying is that any type like all kinds right yeah. 
all kinds of evil. Myron Golden does a really good job of explaining this. So maybe you can link that that video to to this one. Yeah. And if money were, in fact, the root of all evil and like the worst thing in the world, uh. the serpent would have paid Adam and Eve to eat the fruit. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah. I, I thought about that. Like, if, if God, I mean, if God created money, it's not necessarily in and of itself. No, evil. it's not. It's just like how people make that thing an yeah. idol. What it's saying, money being the root of all evil, is that people will kill for money. Yeah. People will rape for money. People will steal for money. People will do yeah. all these things for money. Yeah. It's yeah, not yeah, saying yeah, that yeah. money is like, yo, I feel like. Your just priorities get shifted in the wrong areas. Priorities can be be shifted at the same time. God knows we need money to survive, right? Yeah. So in Genesis, bro, I'll tell tell two stories that are biblical. In Genesis, Abraham, it says that he is rich in cattle, silver, and gold. Some people may say, oh, he's rich in a heavenly inheritance. Right. This man is rich in cattle, silver, and gold, and he got all the spiritual stuff, too. Right, right. David was rich. Solomon was rich. All these people had bread. Right, right. So it's right. like us as believers right now. All these people had all these people had bread. So for us to even think about having a mindset like, oh, I gotta eat this humble like you're talking about humble pie, like, yeah, you could be humble and have M's in your bank account. Yeah, that's true. Account, that's true. That's trillions true. In your bank account. That's true. So it's, that's true. It's it's and in my opinion, in my opinion, Christians should be the wealthiest people on earth. Amen. Because we know the end. And in every inv if so if God gives us the the title of investor, right? Mm. If we look at Matthew 25 and we see that in verse 17 that we're investors, right? Investors make their decisions knowing the value of the company and knowing the end is an advantage. So, think about this, right? This is the best example. In the stock market there's such a thing called an event. Mm. An event, it can happen in the crypto markets as well. An event right, right. is when essentially, excuse my French, when shit hits the fan. Right, 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 right. So the BP oil spill, right? Right. That was an event. Correct. BP, let's say they were trading at $100 at the time and uh, their stock price dipped to, to 40 or 35. Right. 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 And imagine if you're using leverage or something, I mean, you just get totally smoked. You know, totally you can smoked, get, you can you get know crushed, I mean? right? Yeah, yeah. At the same time, that doesn't necessarily reflect on the value of that company. Let's Correct. say they have a great CEO. Let's say they have a great company culture. Let's say they work their butts off. And let's say they are diligent and do their stuff, right? right. right. As an investor, I'm looking from the outside in like, yo, that's a fire company. Right. Like the the boys here at, at, at you know, at Kava, like, Yo, know, like they're diligent, they're they're praying before they work, they seem to get along and all of these things, like, okay. Oh, they're taking money? Like, oh let me let me let me invest in this company and see them grow and help them grow. Right, right. right. Not only that, they got they got they got the uh Exactly got a beautiful, <laughs> beautiful neon cross. I love that neon cross. That's <laughs> right. Fine. I gotta be get me yeah. one of those. <laughs> yeah, that's tough. So anyways, all of this stuff points to a good company, right? Right. So if we look at Jesus, right? Right. Jesus was doing all these signs and wonders and miracles and preaching the gospel and he backed up what he was mm. he was the word of god and he lived out his word kept his word to his people 100 percent. and uh, if we look at the garden of gethsemane or we start off at that at dinner right that night the last supper at dinner jesus had 12 people rolling deep. he had 12 investors right right one left the table to go right to go turn them in then he had 11 investors right then he's in a garden praying. He gets captured. All these dudes leave. He has zero investors. That's an event. That doesn't reflect on the character of Jesus or his promise to his people. Mm. He's still going to complete what he said. It's going to look different. So everybody pulled out their money because they were afraid. Mm. And Warren Buffett talks about this all the time. Yeah. When people are afraid, yeah, that's, that's when, when we get greedy and yeah. start investing in the market. Uh, and when people get greedy, we pull out our money like, ah, oh, there's something, something fishy something's about up. this, you know? Yeah, yeah. So we think about it, right? Mm. Think about how that is played out across the Bible. Yeah. Right? And the beautiful thing about the Word of God, how one thing is is how another thing is, right? Mm -mm. How you relate to one body. I'm, I'm big on and what I do in, in, in my company. I help people show up as the same version of themselves in every single space they step into. I like that. Because I know if you're, if you're a jerk on the basketball court. Yeah. If you're the, if you're a, 
I'm I'm gonna speak keep it a bug, speak like me. Yeah, yeah. If you're an asshole on the basketball court, bro, yeah, you're going to be unkind to your your family at some yeah, point. Too, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, so I truly believe that like it's all about consistency. Jesus was the same person in each space that he stepped into. Yeah. Every single place Jesus went, Jesus was Jesus. Yeah. I, what what I what that reminds me of is is the word integrity, right? Yeah. You've heard of this one before? How mm-hmm. how integrity means integer, like meaning like oneness. So mm-hmm. eight's always an eight. A two is always a two. There's a there's a oneness to a two. Yeah. So with integrity, I'm the same Mike that I am here at Kava. I'm the same Mike at the Grove Market. Yeah. Same grow same Mike to my daughter. Yeah. Same Mike to the homeboys that yeah. I grew up with. You know. Yeah. And I think that that's that's the 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 the, the place that we want to attain to. We want to be that kind of person where you can catch me at church and I'm going to sound the exact same than when I'm talking to my dudes that I catch in the street. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? You know what? I, I would almost push back on that, right? Because mm. there is a way to be the same person in every single per- in every single place you step mm. and move in certain spaces with tact. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I speak four plus languages and let's say four, right? Yeah. Um conversationally or fluently and I there's certain things in certain languages that you can't communicate in other languages yeah yeah, you yeah, just, yeah. You just, just can't you know mm. like there's there's a barrier there and there's a lack of understanding that won't necessarily be communicated and um, I think within and this is what I was mentioning earlier there's a di- I was actually talking to somebody about this outside. There's three different ways, not three different ways, but there's three levels of, I don't even know what I would call this. So first we have dogma, right? Yeah. Dogma is Jesus Christ is the son of God. He's our Lord and savior. And through faith in him, we receive the free gift of eternal life. And we have life more abundantly here on earth, right? All right. these things that cannot be taken away regardless of what, what, doctrine you believe in right catholics protestants uh episcopalians pentecostal non-denominational all these different groups are christians right right right? so they fall under this christian umbrella and then from there you have interpretation yeah that's why one person and interpretation has to do with conviction Mm. so that's why one person can drink in one season another person can't drink right right because we can all go to the same church we can all go to Mm. voo and hey i may be mature enough to handle a glass of wine at dinner you may not be yeah if we're together the bible is very clear about this if we are together if you and i kick it and i'm like though dude like let's go out and have a glass of wine you're like hey bro um that's not for me uh would you mind if we go somewhere else i'm like dude yeah for sure let's do it because that's a stumbling block for you right right. not not to be a stumbling stumbling block for anybody Right, right? right so and at the same time like the bible is very clear that like we're not meant to, like, don't let blessings and curses come from the same mouth. Mm. Like, my conviction about cussing is different than, cussing is not cursing. Right. Cursing is witchcraft. No, yeah, yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. different. And it's There's okay. power in the, in the tongue, right? Exactly. It's okay if, if, if people, um, you know, don't agree with me. That's, that's fine. Like, as it pertains to to cussing i believe there's a certain way to get a point across to certain people that like if i'm in if i'm in an nba locker room or if i'm in certain settings and not even placing a a stigma on on nba NBA locker rooms there's certain if somebody needs to yeah fix up yeah yo like get your get your stuff get your shit together yeah 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 yeah. you know yeah and you might say in a heated way you gotta say it you know and it's, it's not even and it's not even a yeah. Yo, I'm trying to come at you. I'm trying right. to keep it a buck. Right, and I wouldn't right, be keeping right. it a buck in this setting if I'm speaking a certain way. Yeah, yeah. yeah and it's yeah. not, I think code switching is so important because yeah. you probably hear it in, in my voice now. Like there's some times where I feel some type of way about something and I'm going to speak about it. Mm. There's other times where I can sit in front of heads of state, which I have, and have a certain conversation and speak to them differently, whether right. it be in this language or another language. Mm. And mm. All, of it is okay, all of it is okay. And I... I have a a firm conviction that that it is and and it's important that we develop our own relationship with jesus and not live through another person's relationship because yeah if we think about it this way if we look at adam and eve excuse me 
Adam and Eve in the garden, right? Adam, Adam was the one who heard from God that you will not eat, you should not eat from this tree. Right. Then Adam got put to sleep, and that's when Eve was pulled out of him, and then right. Eve was formed out of the man. Right. Uh, Eve didn't hear from God that she wasn't meant to eat. Eve heard from Adam. Eve heard through Adam. Right. So you got a lot of people saying, hey, mm. I heard from so-and-so that I'm not meant to be doing this. Mm. But in the words of Drake, you don't say that in the Bible. Right. You know, you, you have right, to like right, right. actually have a relationship right. and understand like, okay, I can't tell you how many times, dude, I've heard things before I finished the Bible. Yeah. I can't tell you how many times I've heard things that, oh, you're not meant to do that. You can't do that as a Christian. You can't do that. You mm. can't do that. And you just live in this box of like, imagine this, bro. Like they're, imagine a, a plate, right? Oh, yeah. let's, let's use this cup as an example, right? Yeah. If you play around the edge of this, you're going to fall, right? right. You're going to fall and you can hurt yourself. Let's yeah. consider that sin, right? Yeah. Falling. Some people are not mature enough, so they have to stay around the inner rim. Yeah. They have to for protection. Yeah. Sometimes you could stay on this rim. Sometimes you can have all this room to play in. You have your limits and you say, I'm not going across this. I'm not one for t testing limits. I'm not, I'm not testing limits. What I am saying is that we have to live our lives in Christ. And life is not meant to be restrictive. It's meant to be fun. And you do that with having healthy boundaries. And the Bible is clear about those boundaries. And it's our job as believers, since the curtain tore, he is our high priest. We don't need to go to anybody else in order to speak to the Father. We go through Jesus in order to speak to the Father. So when us going through Jesus in order to speak to the Father... We don't have to go hear from somebody else and saying like, oh, this, it's important to go to church and all this. I, yes, please go to church. Go be in a community. Be in all these, all these places. Gather with other believers in community in a church. And have your own intimate relationship with the Lord. Yeah. Because I've heard so many people, bro. I've, say relationship I've so and religion, I feel like. Relationship it, it, and religion. It, 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 I think that's what we're talking about here, yeah. right? Have you, like, heard, have you heard somebody say, oh, the church, I left the church because the church don't feed me no more? Mm, I mean, a hundred people, like, I feel like that's just like, that's the main thing now nowadays, in my opinion. You know, mm -hmm. I feel like if there's anything that's like in like the aura of like what kids nowadays talk about, mm -hmm. one is that college is a scam. They say that you shouldn't go to school, right? That I feel like that's like a popular thing. Yeah. And then the other thing too is that uh, you you don't need to go to church, and that it's all um, you know whatever. Yeah. Somebody else, some man came up with it. Yeah. And I'm gonna have my own personal relationship yeah. with God, right? Yeah. And I think that I mean, there's a lot of things to talk about with mm -hmm. with that bucket there, but I think that relationship is good, and I feel like that's actually a big part that maybe people that grew up with religion are missing. Yeah. But there is, you can't throw out the baby with the bathwater as far as uh, when you do gather with other like-minded folks, like community and also other brothers that strengthen you when you're in times of weakness and yeah. all this kind of stuff. Like that really helps, you know, because yeah, definitely. if you're, if you're basically the, the one that's saying, Hey, I'm creating my own syncretistic uh, religion where I'm coming up with my own thoughts and putting things yeah. together you end up making your own God. Yeah. You're, you're your own God coming up with your own things, yeah. you know? So, yeah, I think it's a delicate balance there. And there's a difference between wisdom and fear mm. and wisdom. The most accurate translation for wisdom in Hebrew is skill, right? It's not necessarily, Oh, you know, better. It's, it's, it's a skill, right? You're skilled in certain settings. You have the skill to be able to maneuver in these spaces and make these certain decisions. And through, learning and seeking wisdom and seeking skill maybe through a university or maybe through an online course or whatever it may be and definitely through a church because you're getting the you're sitting under the leadership of a pastor who more than likely knows the word better than you um, and he's been appointed as it says in the word like our leaders have been appointed you know by god um and uh, through them we're able to Bible doesn't say this part, but like through them we're able to to learn and and, and understand the word in a different perspective. And it's yeah. important to you know, because I may believe one thing, you may believe another thing. Yeah. In community, we have to then sit and be like, okay, like let's talk it out. That's why I feel like podcasts are such a great medium to have yeah. these conversations because it's not a 
cut and dry. It's not cut and dry, bro. Yeah. It's not an interview per se. It's like we're two dudes sitting on a couch. Yeah. You know, in 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 Miami and chilling, having a good time while the people are around working. Like we're we're having a blast, you know. Yeah. So it's like uh, it's it's important to get together. It's important to to be in community. And I want to speak to people specifically who have had church hurt. Like I've been hurt in church. I've been hurt in the church that I go to now. I've been hurt overseas in churches on missions bases in foreign countries. Like I, I've been hurt in these places. And through that, I'm able to have a better relationship with God. Cause like, I think about it this way, the Bible never contradicts itself, mm. never. So if I believe one thing and somebody's speaking to me like, hey, it says this in the Bible, I can take that to the word of God and be like, hey, I have my own relationship with the Lord. So let me sit down with the Lord and be like, yo, Tell me about this. God was good. Yeah, Tell yeah, me about yeah, this. Yeah, yeah. You know? Yeah. And we all have our different, like, convictions. Yeah, yeah. And not, and I've, I think this is so important, bro. This is so important. Like, there's such a thing as abuse of spiritual authority. Mm. And uh, I have been, I've neglected the fact that I've had my own individual relationship with the Lord before. And especially when I have gone into new settings. Mm. And let's say, uh share this story I think it's okay for me to share this story so like I I went um I was in this I won't say what country I was in but I was in this um this church meeting in this foreign country and in this country um I was just feeling like there was a lot of of great things that I was receiving there was also like this tinge of religiosity this religious spirit that I was yeah feeling. yeah and uh, when I'm there um when one of the services i'm like okay lord I, I please show me what's you and what's not you and uh um in prayer i'm sitting down i'm in prayer and this guy comes over to me he gives me an on-point prophetic word he's like yo this 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 and i'm like dang bro like i appreciate you like yes like thank you lord and then he puts his hand on me and starts praying in tongues and like presses me down trying to get me to fall in oh, the spirit yeah. and it's kind of like uh, mm, I see it. I see it. I see both of those. Like, and that's the tension that we live in because mm, God is there and man is there too. Mm, so it's this understanding. Man, that brings up a good thing, man. Damn. Have you ever felt like, and I know you're making a point here, have you ever been to one of those services you felt like that was truly happening? The spirit was moving, people were falling out. That was. Oh, yes. Yeah, all right. All that's right. been. You oh, invite man. me? Yeah, I haven't, you know, I haven't experienced it here in Miami. No? I've only experienced it in that country. Is that right? Oh, my goodness. Because it, I will listen, experience it here in Miami, I, I've for sent sure. these types of vids to some of the homies, and they're like, Mike, that's not real, da 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 and all this. And I'm like, dude, I hear you. I've seen some of the mega churches, some of this stuff, yeah. and I'm like, yo, okay, that looks gimmicky. I'm not with that. But dude, I've seen some other stuff where I'm like, dude, it's, that yeah. person is like, that's real bro it's real you know it what can, I'm saying? to be honest bro it doesn't have to be in a church setting it can really happen anywhere like it can happen here no they were doing it at, at, at a movie theater they were doing it at a movie theater bro it can happen it can happen here <laughs> All right, let's it's go. really an invitation like we can put these mics down <laughs> we're, we're spirit a, a, a pop up we're gonna cast out some demons <laughs> is any, anybody here demonic possessed uh no, it's have not even, it's demons not even, uh, cast out of them it's not even that man like i i you know it really is an invitation thing. Like I'm big on inviting the Lord into everyday spaces, man. And yeah. Like, yes, casting out demons and and you know healing the sick. That's that's normal as a result of what the Lord says. It may not be normal in this country. And yeah, I heard it. Uh, yeah, like the Book of Acts. That's 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 that's, that's what it literally was. what it is. That's what it was. You know. You know, this is it, it's it's real. Like, bro, I'm telling you, I've seen some stuff that's like nuts. Um, <sighs> It's nuts, but it's not nuts. And yeah, man, it, it's it's a matter of uh, inviting and believing. And once you see it, like you cannot see it. Yeah. And it's this just wave of just a belief that just wells up in you. Um, and anytime, it says this in the word, anytime you preach the gospel, anytime, signs, miracles, and wonders yeah. will follow. No, I, I know that 100%. And, and, and one thing that, that made me think of is, the quote, be, because, of you, because of your faith, like you are healed. Mm -hmm. and, it, and also like, you know, faith moves mountains. And it's like, it, that's the funny oh. part about f talking about faith is that faith, you need the faith 
that's like the secret sauce of like the the, spe the special ingredient for the thing to actually work. So a lot of the person, a lot of the times, the non-believer mm -hmm. will say, yo, but that doesn't happen to me. Mm -hmm. Oh, you faith-filled people are crazy, mm -hmm. but it's like, yo, because you're actually lacking that secret ingredient. You're not getting all those manifestations, all that stuff, because you're still lacking the faith, you know? I, so At the same time. Isn't I, that crazy? I, at the same time, I... I would disagree in some ways, you yeah. know, I want to explore more what the Lord says, like, hey, um, through your faith, you have been healed. You know, that woman definitely believed and it came to pass. Right. And at the same time, bro, like, just because somebody don't believe, like, you could still walk up to them and pray for them. And yeah, yeah, yeah. The Holy yeah. Spirit will meet them right there and they'll just fall out. Like, I, that's true. Bro, there's some people who. Yeah maybe don't believe they could still get saved and they could still have an encounter with the lord so mm. by saying somebody's faith is like an inhibitor for a relationship mm. you know i guess that would put a uh, a limit on god and that's something that we can never do because mm. god can bro if god can talk to somebody and give somebody a word through a donkey right god can give somebody a word through you know a non-believer i had so i had breakfast with somebody today I told you the conversation. Somebody was talking to me about being on a podcast. Yeah, yeah. The dude I had breakfast with a day, an old trainer of mine. I love the guy. He's not a believer. Mm. He gives me a prophetic word on the spot. What did he tell you? He didn't know. He was, he was, he was like, hey, you should step back into podcasting. Oh, yeah. Like, you, you should start start up your podcast again. And, like, you should be doing this more. Yeah. And, bro, the second episode I recorded of, was it the second one? Mm. The second episode of the podcast with, it, was with you Mike. and Mike. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's... That's just how it is. That's right? how it is. He yeah. had no idea this morning that he was yeah. doing that. I heard him. I'm like, yeah. uh, you know what's funny? That's what people uh, call the Matrix, right? But and and it's funny. It's like to me, it's the same thing, right? It's like and there's a there's a there's a quote from this is like a Taoist a, a Taoist uh, a philosophy is fingers pointing to the moon. Basically, you can either look at the finger or the moon, one or the other. So it's like we're pointing to a message, and it's up to you. Are you pointing at the, the words I'm trying to comprehend or are you paying attention to the message that I'm trying to come across, mm. you know? And, um, uh, damn, I just lost my, my uh, train of thought. You're what, talking what, about pointing at the, uh, the dude, the dude who I had breakfast with this morning. About the Tao Te but what would they say about the Tao Te Ching? Um, you said the moon and pointing. They know, oh man, I wish I could go backwards. There was a good point to that one. Um, but basically, it's uh, it's either you're either gonna look at one thing or the other. You're gonna look at the messenger or the, or the message. And I forgot what, what I was wrapping mm -hmm. around that. Um, oh man, you so many good things. Something about the matrix or something. Right, that's what it is. So the matrix, it's like people are saying God's uh, the matrix, but it's like labeling God's design. You know, let's like I haven't heard that one before. What do you God's mean? God's the God being the matrix. Yeah. Mm -mm, well, like listen, there's a matrix. Yeah. And then God created everything. Right. So there's like there's a formulation for God's design, mm -hmm. which I feel like our people are calling that the matrix. So when 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 you're having these spiritual encounters or these connections and all this kismet, which is like a Jewish word for like all these like connections, that's God's design. Yeah. And we're seeing the weave in the tapestry. But to, to a non-believer, they go, oh, pff, that's the matrix. You yeah. know, that's that's yeah. God's code. It's all mathematics. Y yeah. You know what I'm saying? I hear you. Like <laughs> Everybody has their own explanation. Yeah. For things. And, and you know what? I'm becoming more. I don't know if open is the appropriate word. I think about Jesus, right? And how Jesus would be open to certain conversations that certain believers in the church wouldn't be open to. Like yeah. If if. I guarantee Jesus would definitely have a conversation with a gay dude. Yeah. Just some people in the church was like, eh. No, yeah, exactly. And that goes back to the religio religiosity or yeah, whatever. The spirit of know? religion, yeah. Yeah. It's that at the end of the day, like, Jesus was a pretty radical dude, you know? Yeah. He was super was, radical. Jesus would piss off the church today. He would piss off a lot. Yeah, he, he would, would piss off the church today. He would flip tables and he would say, what are you guys yeah. doing here? You, you know? know, it's really a submission. I think one of the most powerful words and the most powerful frame of mind to approach even the gospel is, I don't know. Mm, that's, that's, that's deep. Like, the I don't Bible, know. The so Bible, many people talk so much out of their ass that they got no idea what they're talking about. That's so funny. Like, the Bible's 66 books, right? It, let's say... I don't know how many pages of the Bible is. It depends on the version, I guess. But yeah, let's say yeah. the Bible is 1,600 pages, right? The Bible is 1,600 pages. It has a start and an end, mm. right? 
God is infinite. Of course, his word can be transmitted through that, or his, his word is, is that book, right? And he speaks to us through his word, and we get new revelations through the same pages of the Bible, which we always will. It's a living word. It's living and breathing. Right. And um, where's that going with this? And it would be doing us, we'd be doing ourselves a disservice as believers saying, I know. Like if, if, if somebody repeats a verse, like I, I said that verse, Romans eight twenty eight, and Caleb was like, yeah, it's my family's verse. If he's, just imagine if he approached it, like, I don't know. There's this one story that I absolutely love in the Bible. I like playing what if in the Bible. Mm. There's this, there's a word for it, this phrase for it, that what if with history. Mm. It is when, I think it's John 18, it's when Jesus, there might not be a John 18, but anyways, Jesus is speaking to, Jesus is speaking to the Pharisees, and they ask him, this is why I said John, they ask him, by what authority are you doing what you're doing? And he asked them a question, he's like, well, I will tell you by what authority I'm doing this, if you tell me by what authority John did what he did. He was talking about John the Baptist. Right. And... Uh, they turn around, I imagine this in my head, they turn around, they have this little imaginary huddle, and they're like, yo, like, if we say that John was doing it by heaven's authority, Jesus, will, Jesus is going to say to us, well, why did you have him executed? And if we say that John was doing it by earthly authority, we're afraid that people are going to stone us because they believe he was a prophet. So what they did, they turned around, and they told Jesus, hey, we don't know. And Jesus is like, well, then I don't know by what authority I'm doing it. And he left it at that. Jesus obviously knew the answer to their question. And it says in the scripture, I believe it says this in the scripture, that Jesus knew exactly what they were saying. Like he knew that these were their two options of what they were going to say. He knew it through prophetic word. So in that being the case, and I, I believe this is important to say, I don't, believe, I don't believe Jesus on earth knew everything. He knew what he had to know because he was a human being. Right. He had a certain connection with the Father, and he was able to speak on certain things from that authority, and the Holy Spirit spoke through him. Still, I believe it would go against our humanity and if, if Jesus knew every single thing, because there right. would be no room for him to learn as a human being. Right, right. right? He had to I learn, think so. it, you know? It makes sense. So, anyways, like the what if statement in that is okay. What if the Pharisees turned around, they were kept they kept it a buck with Jesus, and they're like, yo, like this is what I believe, like, we're afraid that we're going to get stoned if we say that he was not a prophet, and if we say he is a prophet, you're going to call us a hypocrite for killing him, so mm -hmm. well, this is where we are right now, Jesus, mm -hmm. honestly, this is where we are, imagine what Jesus would have been able to do with that, with their honesty, being like, yo, I'm really here, like, if you look at the, we can go on for hours, bro, think about the story of... <sighs> Think about the story of, I forget where I was going with this. Where was I going, Holy Spirit? Where was I going? We talked about those two things. I'll just finish this, this, this and then probably go back to it. God used one Pharisee to rewrite or to write the majority of the New Testament. Think about that. He used one. All God needed was one. Same way all David needed was one stone. Only needed one. And he got the job done. Think about what God could have done with all those other Pharisees and be like, yo, this is where I am right now. And a story about money, bro, this is so important. And it touches based on what we were saying before. The rich young ruler. You know that story, right? Mm -hmm. He's like, hey, I did, the, like, God, I did, or Jesus, I did this, 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 this. You know, I, I was honest with my family and, you know, I gave to the poor and did all these things. Da, 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 da. What else do I need to do to have eternal life? And Jesus is like, you did all those things? He's like, yeah, I did all those things. He's like, okay, now sell all your possessions and, and give that to the poor. Mm. And he ducked his head down. He's like, dang, that's tough. And he walked away. Mm. What Jesus was saying wasn't a one size fits all statement that, hey, dude, you got to sell your possessions and give all it to the poor. Mm. What Jesus was saying was he was calling this guy a hypocrite, essentially. Yeah. Because this guy was like, yo, like, I'm perfect. Yeah, yeah, you're so good. I'm so good. I'm perfect. I did all these things. Yeah. I just haven't done that one thing. Yeah. And then he humbled him. The remedy for that man 
specifically was like, yo, sell all your stuff. Sell your stuff, yeah. I, I think that's a good point, and uh, and you, I'm sure I'll add into it, and you might think about your previous thought, but it's like, I think <laughs> going back to the relationship, God, God touches all of our hearts, mm. specifically about certain issues all the time, and they're different between what's happening with me and you, right? Mm. So, for example, and this is, for some reason, weed's coming to mind for me. Yeah. For somebody, maybe for them, maybe they have cancer and for yeah. them they need to they need to toke up before they go to bed. Yeah. Maybe for somebody with an addictive personality, they can't have weed yeah. at all or whatever it is, you know? And it's for them it's it's all just based on who you are and how you're feeling and the way God's talking to you, mm. you know? If God's telling you you de- you feel it within your soul, hey hey yeah. Lord, hey Alonzo, hey Mike, put it down. Yeah. You got to listen to that yeah. or, you know, Maybe yeah. God's actually saying, hey, actually, bro, he's nudging you saying, actually, this might actually help your stomach. Yeah. You know, you can't sleep at night. You know, you, yeah. you're you throwing up because you have cancer yeah. or you're taking chemo. Or, yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's definitely that's where relationship comes into play. And God has the grace for when we mess up. Yeah, he definitely has the grace for when we mess up. And I, I there's a difference between knowing better and taking a step of faith and be like, hey, God, like. What do you say about this? Yeah, and that's something. I mean, obviously, we, we could we could talk with a pastor, talk talk with different people that are obviously like spiritually savvy to help us guide us through those. But a lot of those things are our relationship that we were talking about. It's relationship based. That's relationship. You know, you know? it's relationship. And so, the best the best teachers of the word always point you to the word. They don't mm, necessarily point you to themselves. Right. And, bro, uh, every pastor, every leader is only a comma to the period. Like I said before, we already have a priest. He's the best priest that we'll ever have. And all he needed to do was make one sacrifice. There doesn't need to be this constant sacrifice, sacrifice. God doesn't want the sacrifice. He wants he wants obedience more than he wants sacrifice. He says that to Saul too. Saul went and, and tried to sacrifice all these animals. And God was like, no, kill everybody. He was talking about um, the Midianites. I believe. He was like, yo, kill all these people. And then wait for Samuel to come pull up and and do his thing. Saul held on to the sheep. He held on to the sheep and the cows and all these things because he wanted to make a sacrifice to God. And it was also because he was afraid of his men. And think about how many people make decisions because they're afraid. Fear, bro. That's the killer, dog. You know? That's and the killer, my brother. It says that perfect love casts out all fear. Mm. The reason perfect love can cast out all fear is because love is a spirit and fear is a yeah, spirit. Yeah, no, you know what's funny is that I catch myself, like, when I'm at my house and I'm moving, doing things, blah, blah, blah. If I'm moving with a spirit of fear, I try to, like, dead mm-hmm. that, like, so I mean, you quick. pray against it, bro. Yeah, exactly. It's, you pray against it. It's like the, the weapons that we fight with as believers are mad different from what the world fights with. Like... It's different, bro. Mm-hmm. It's really different. Like this is how you fight your battles. Like we, yeah, yeah, yeah. you pray, and uh, bro, like I'm, I promote like, just, bro, just having a relationship with the Lord has mm-hmm. saved my life. Just, mm-hmm. just being able to have somebody consistent who I can fight in, and the Holy Spirit is a person too. So like, when you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, Jesus as Jesus isn't actually here. You know, He's here in the sense. And let me explain this too. Jesus isn't actually here. He's seated by the right hand of the Father. Mm-hmm. He's not here on earth. He's coming back. He's not here now. Mm-hmm. Who is here is the Holy Spirit. And it's illegal for the way God made things. It's illegal for a spirit to not have a body. So the spirit has to rest in a body. Mm-hmm. Our, we're the temples of the Holy Spirit, right? Yeah. And there are other spirits around, other people who carry other spirits other and spirits. are influenced by other spirits. Uh-huh. So, yeah. I forget where I was going. I always get I, I always get tripped up with alcohol and spirits, and mm-hmm. you know, if you, like, you know, there's you, know, you got a spirit in you, bro. You there's know? an association with that at the same yeah. time. Yeah. To just blatantly say alcohol is wrong is wrong. No, exactly. Yeah, that's well, a great Jesus point. Jesus's first yep. miracle, he turned water to wine yeah. at a wedding at a party. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. No, yeah, they yeah, was having yeah. a good time. They called Jesus a drunkard and a glutton. Yeah, the people yeah. who were judging him. Yeah. So. You had to know that Jesus was drinking his wine. He was having a good time. Yeah. He was dancing. My, that's my favorite thing. It's like, man, this guy's a tax collector. He's hanging out with this guy. Come on, bro. You know, this guy, uh, you know, what was it? Peter cut, cut off a dude's ear. Yeah. Like, you did it with some rowdy dudes, you like, know? Come on, bro. These are who he was hanging around. He was hanging around fishermen. He was hanging around, Yeah. you know, 
Yeah. Lack of a better word, some real niggas. Like, yeah, yeah, <laughs> Jesus pretty, pretty was much. Exactly. Shaking around <laughs> some, some real niggas, you know? <laughs> yep. So, like, that being the case, man, I feel like the more mature we become in our walks with the Lord, the better we get it navigating other conversations with people who may or may not dis may or may not agree with us yeah well that's my favorite thing about being a steward like i was talking to caleb about it like because he was asking about my podcast and sometimes i don't know where they are where they stand so i said oh my podcast on spirituality and stuff mm-hmm. and he thought i was coming on some like uh new age woo woo stuff and it's just like you know obviously i'm more christian it's christ focused yeah. however you know, I do want to be open to to not shoo people away that maybe aren't so close yeah. in Christ. The hey, I'm talking yeah. about spirituality. You know, um, yeah. But uh, yeah, it is funny how people can get that misnomer. You know what's funny? I never did uh, an intro with you, so that's all good. We it's can. all good. Hey, so ladies and gentlemen, I have here Alonzo Morning Junior. Uh, oh, the third. So the, the, you butchered that. Oh, uh, <laughs> my third. dad. My dad is, is he's Alonzo. junior. He's junior. Oh shit. He's so you're junior. the third. I'm the third. So th- that, that's, that's why, why Trey. Trey. All right. That makes sense. But but those three, guys are looking like yo. That's. But 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 oh, but, <laughs> but 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 but. Click it click. Uh huh. But but. Yeah. But three's a good. Uh huh. That's pops. My 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 That's first pops. jersey. My first jersey was it was his dad's. The the white one with the the block thirty three, bro. That's that tough. old school yeah, one, bro. dog. I wish That's I still had jersey. that, bro. Yeah, That's a tough jersey. That's tough, dog. That's a tough jersey. <laughs> yeah, man. But anyway, hey, hey, first of all, what uh, what shirt size are you? Are you extra large? A two XL? Probably a two X. Two X. All right, here I got probably you. Probably a two X. I got you a gift, dog. Thank you, bro. Let's see what we got here. I okay, so that's that. an XL. All right, so you you got two options. You could have one of the serve others shirt or <laughs> uh, the love your enemy shirt. Oh no, that's no, those are those both XLs. So both the XLs. This is a two XL right here. So what serve, is this? It's uh, serve others. Serve like others, it. bro. Thank you, bro. I appreciate this. Got you, my brother. So, hooking you up, bro. You know, a little Amen. gift, bro. You know what I'm saying? You know. Appreciate you. you the, the 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 spiritual laws, bro. You come on my podcast. You hook me up with a with a little interview. You know, I, I hook you up Amen. with a little gift, bro. You know no. what I'm saying? As long as other people are blessed by this, bro. I appreciate you. Amen, bro. No, I, I mean honestly, you. like when I talk with you, I just I know how how ingrained you are in God's word, and to me, it means a lot because. And, and it's funny. I'm a I'm an audiobook guy. So I'm a oh, I, I crush I, audiobooks. I, I'm an audiobook guy, right? So I, I so when I first went into Bible and all this stuff, I was audiobook, audiobook, audiobook. You know what's so crazy is that when you actually read the Bible, it's I don't know if it's like symbols or 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 if it's like talking to your spiritual nature or something like that. But actually looking at the words. It's like really, it, it, I don't know. Wow. I, I I can't even physically yeah. like like explain it, but it's just like it's really, it's really interesting looking at the Bible, noticing how it's some sort of source code and reading it. There's just so much knowledge that you get yeah. it more than just what you're even thinking that you're receiving. I listen to the Bible on audio too. Yeah, you like I listen to. I think the majority. But do you think reading it has that ability of what I'm talking about? It's interesting. I want to, and we could do this right now. I want to actually search this word in a meeting. Um, it says that faith comes through hearing, right? Mm. Hearing. I want to get this verse right exactly. It says faith comes. Faith comes through hearing. Mm. So I want to know what hearing actually means. Hearing might mean yo, just listen to the audiobook version of the Bible or read the Bible. Like I, mm. I'm. I, this is how I think about it. Spending time with the Lord, right? Technology can can really help us in our walks with the Lord, like AI even. Like I, I met this one dude and he broke down. He asked ChatGPT a question about the Bible and like helped him put together a reading plan for the Bible in a year. And he's like, dude, like all, That's these, really things cool. are, all these things are tools. So for me... I really like listening to the Bible. I like hearing the words being said rather than having to sit down all the time and and read. Mm. It feels, you know what? It feels appropriate for me in this season. I know Mm. there are other seasons in which the Lord has called me to, to read the Bible. That's okay. It's, it's really a matter of like 
just trying to understand because I'm gonna keep doing audiobooks the rest of my life. I will. Yeah, yeah. You know. Yeah, it's just so much easier when you're easier, you know, exercising still, or in the car or whatever you know, it is. You know. And it's not even this like multitask thing in a way. It's like, yo, like, I don't want to read something right now. I just want to lay down and hear somebody read the Bible to me and just look at the ceiling, and just be like. Mm-hmm. That's good. The guy's gonna speak to you anyways. Yeah. You spend time with the Lord. You open up His Word, bro. Like if you have a Bible right here, and you ask the Lord for a word, it's not even no like Ouija board type of stuff. It's just like, dude. Like I was talking to one of my my OGs outside, one of my friends, and I got this word. I was about to drive up to Jupiter for this event, and I had a conversation with with somebody about um um. I was looking at like finances really. I was doing some budgeting uh, yeah. for the coming weeks. And uh, I open up the word and one of the first things I see is like regardless of what it costs, get wisdom. Mm. Even if it costs everything you have, get wisdom. And it was kind of like this, oh shoot, like I just opened up the word and I saw that, you know. Yeah. And uh, and that message was right for you. It was right, right the, for the, me. The, the timing is you know? crazy, right? And, you know, some people can consider the decisions you do foolish. Like in that case, the word foolish came to mind that day. I talked to one of my friends. He said foolish. Not about what I was doing, but he referenced a verse. And it was in Philippians. And I opened the Bible again, and I come across that verse. And it's not like I was looking for it. It found me. You know? And, I, you know, when people say, oh, I found Jesus, like, I mean, like we never, it's not us finding Jesus. He's always found us. Mm. There's no, there's no... There's no parable in the Bible of us finding Jesus. Yeah. It's always him encountering us. So that's what I was saying to you before about like we can't we can't say that oh Jesus is going to speak to you this way. It's like dude, like he can pull up on you in broad daylight. Like what's up? What you going to yeah. do? Yeah, <laughs> you yeah, make, yeah. You know? Mm-hmm. If you're a believer, a non-believer, like yeah. you can't put God in a box and that's the beautiful thing about it. Like dude, yeah. once that curtain tore it's yeah. a free for all. Yeah, yeah. I, I, yeah. It's funny. It, it's it's like I'm thinking of like two things. It's like the, there's a James four eight. I think is what it is. It's like come close to God, and God comes near to you. Mm-hmm. Which I I I, I do. I, I really like resonate with that, but that's kind of like having the the free will and or the uh, the you're you're the one that's initiating that. But I I get the point that what you're saying is that a lot of the times. <laughs> we're out we're completely out of control here and this is all this is all god's hand and mm-hmm. god's doing and he's he could select whatever time and place and season to to mm-hmm. to move in someone's life so that is a good point and, and i think that i do kind of find myself thinking more along the lines of how much autonomy i have in this scenario which is great but there's a, there's only so much i mean when you when you move in this walk you start realizing that God, the man upstairs, he's the one in control, yeah, really, bro. not me. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So, yeah. Um, I like looking at plans, my schedule, like firewood on an altar. So, like, I can't make a sacrifice to the Lord if I don't have wood to burn on a sacrifice. It's a burnt offering. Mm. So, I still need to plan. I still need to set my schedule and be like, I'm going to do this, 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 this. I'm going to be organized. I'm going to budget. I'm going to do this, 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 this. God can drop $100,000 in your bank account tomorrow off some yeah. stuff out of left field and you like well dang i ain't even know this is gonna happen i ain't budget for this Not but i still had to budget in order mm-hmm. so it's like mm-hmm. we still need to do our work mm-hmm. and god will show up mm-hmm. and do something miraculous and he I, I believe he will still it's the tension i'm talking about it's the and you know yeah bro you, you're you're I, I as a, as you're talking to me i'm trying to remember a verse it's something along the lines and i can't remember it, you might even be able to pull it up but it's something along the lines of like that that god calls you and you have to do the action and and if you don't it's like it it passes you by and um it was i mean i guess it's something along the lines of what you were saying before but it's like you really have to do the you have to do the work when when you're being called to and mm-hmm. if you don't that's the you know you could i mean i don't want to say losing salvation i mean could, you potentially know. could i you guess know. i don't no, know but no i mean there's no there's nothing i can take it away yeah right there's nothing that can take it away your salvation is yours yeah and 
that's something I firmly believe. Like, yeah. it's yours. Yeah. Not, no. And, uh, I mean, nothing can take, nobody can take something out of God's hands. Mm. Nor will God let you go. Yeah. You know? And, like, once you have the Holy Spirit living in you, yeah. the Holy Spirit is putting desires in your heart. Like, it says that the Holy Spirit, I'm not quoting the verse verbatim, the Holy Spirit works inside of us to give us what God wants. And then it becomes what we want. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So once we make that decision, bro, once you get, once you make that decision, having sex with your girl is going to be tough. Yeah, I, I heard something online that someone said something and it was so profound. It was like, at first you have to attune yourself with God's will. Mm-hmm. And then, and then you could start your own free will, right? So it's almost mm. like first starting off with God's will and then yours, because it's like, if you're just starting off with your own free will, you're just, you know, you could just be doing mm. some degenerate crazy stuff because you don't have the, yeah. the, the God center. I guess it comes with, it comes with understanding, understanding a relationship. It's like, okay, what does God, what does God call for me to do in a situation? Mm. Right? Cause like, let's say you give your life to Christ right now mm. and You've never been to a party as a Christian. Mm. There's nothing wrong going up. I was at a party in early February. I had a blast. Right. Danced to like two in the morning to whatever. Carlos Vives. It was a blast, <laughs> you know. Um, now, if you're new to the faith, going to a party may feel like right, right. You know, <clears throat> de- depending. Like it, it depends. Like yeah. some people, in a way, it can be taught sometimes because a lot of people when you first come to Christ, like, yo, what do I do? Mm-hmm. I had people ask me before, it's like, yo, what book do I read? Mm-hmm. I love starting with Proverbs. Yeah. That's fantastic for Proverbs me. I amazing. love Proverbs. And yeah. Proverbs is 31 chapters, so you could read it like a devotional. Yeah. So day one, first day of the month, you read Proverbs one and two, three. I pro- read Proverbs more than any book in the Bible. I feel like if you don't know, say you don't know. Mm. If you don't know what to do in this situation, ask for help. It says in the Bible that God, if you ask for wisdom, God will give you wisdom. Yeah. I'm using the restroom. I still want to keep, no, keep yeah, going. No, yeah, yeah. Let's keep it right going. Back. Let's keep it going. You're good. Yeah, these peeps are, are mad cool. And if you follow them on, on Instagram or whatever, like, bro, they have always different nights of, like, open mics or whatever. I will do that. I'm, I'm going to hang out on Coral way more. It was funny, this brother right here, Caleb, was telling me that uh, I guess they do different open mics, and I'm kind of keeping it low profile because, you know, yeah. some of the people that, that 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 patron here might be some of these folks, but they have, like, on the, some of the open mics, they've been doing, like, you know, people will say stuff, and apparently sometimes they'll say some things that are kind of, dare I say, satanic, or things that are kind of spiritually on the other side of things, and I think that uh, they got got annoyed by that, and hence the uh, the cross on uh, the light. Yeah. So that, 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 that. that's her way of kind of. Yeah. <laughs> I, feel, I, I, I think about it this way, man. Like, if you don't show who you stand for, like, people might come in and try to act a fool. Mm-hmm. Like, if you don't show how you get down. So. Yeah. That's my two cents about that. No, it's crazy. Um it, it, it's funny when when I was very much part of this world, I wasn't I wasn't very much aware of the spiritual warfare, because I feel like if you're not aware of it, that means you're kind of on the losing end of the battle, maybe. Because mm-hmm. I was, um, yeah, I guess so, yeah. I I, I was just kind of just sleepwalking, you know. And I think that yeah. a lot of people fall into that. And um, yeah, when I really had that 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 strong epiphany that I was um, spiritually, I was kind of like going after the wrong things in my life. Yeah. Uh, that was a real tough pill to swallow, man. That was, um, you know, talk about like a red pill moment, man. Yeah. That was like my red pill moment when, yeah. when I kind of realized that everything I was chasing after in my life, as far as like fame, um, mm-hmm. all this kind of stuff, I was like in LA trying to become famous in the art scene. Mm-hmm. And um, I realized that, that everybody that's, not everybody, I don't want to make a blanket statement, but a lot of the folks that are in the scene there they're really just placating to a system and, you know, they're scratching someone's back and it's, it's a whole game just yeah. like a lot of things are. And it's not really mo- about your skill as much as who you know and it, the agenda you're trying to propagate. And it just, it just became so obvious to me how phony it is, you know, mm-hmm. and it broke me down because I was like, man, 
this is what I spent so much of my time and effort and hours yeah. just working so hard on art. And it's like, bro, for what? Yeah. To, to, to have some art gallery owner, like, think you're cool meanwhile like 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 you don't even like care about this person's values mm. you know what i'm saying like once you start with like at least for me i woke up and i was like man my whole life just went spinning bro yeah. you know what i mean that's a tough that's a tough realization man I, I it takes a lot of courage to follow christ because when you make that decision usually your world is turned upside down mm -hmm. it's not this like you give your life to jesus and everything is sweet nope Mm -hmm. That first year or so or however long it takes you to walk through the valley of death, dude, like stuff is leaving your life left and right. That's right. You know, I heard like, you know, I had so much more power, influence, yeah. all this stuff, you know, and but it, you start realizing it's kind of like demonic power, bro. Mm -hmm. I mean, I was, you know, it's empty. Yeah. But it was just like you, you're using all this ugly power you yeah. know Ma through machiavellian ways or all this like mm. you know like 48 laws of power like yeah. coming on that robert green type of yeah thing, yeah you bro, know what i mean I used and to it's read just all ugly books. bro yeah. it's ugly to live a life like that where you're just constantly trying to get ahead bro yeah. you know what i'm saying yeah but that's tough you know it's it's definitely tough i i teach a lot from a place of overflow and i mean i gave the the answer away already but if you for those of you at home like if just imagine this like if you put a glass of water on a table right you put a glass of water on a table and you put a bunch of sticky notes around it and on these sticky notes you write all the goals that you want to achieve you want to have a healthy family you want to have six figures in your bank account at all times you want to um, lose weight you want to you know have a great relationship with you know, your significant other, and then you want to, uh, I don't know, travel overseas, right? These are all things that you want to achieve. The best way to, in order to achieve those goals, you have to get the liquid that's in the cup onto the sticky notes. The best way to do that isn't by taking and pouring out, because if you take and pour out, you leave yourself empty. The best way to do that is to fill yourself up again and again and again mm. until you overflow. Oh. And as you overflow, what you a nice change. Metaphor. You change the surroundings, mm. right? You achieve those goals and you achieve them in God's time because it becomes more about the inputs into you rather than the outputs because mm. you can't control outputs, we control inputs. Yo, that's dope. Yeah. yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, it's just, you know, you know what's funny is that that's doing it the right way yeah. and I think that we get kind of psyoped and tricked into thinking the quick way, right? Because yeah. there's, there's so many manifestations yeah. uh, online and oh my goodness, this person turn this into that in this amount of time yeah. and that's kind of like the story that gets we talk about yeah. if it bleeds it leads well if it's uh mm -hmm. if it's something that happens overnight it leads you know what yeah. i'm saying what do you mean by it bleeds it leads well because remember how you were talking about like in the news they always talk about like things that are negative oh, to like yeah to, to, yeah, the, yeah, to, to yeah, summarize that, that that phrase is if it bleeds it leads that's you know tough. what i'm saying but it's kind of like the same thing like with nowadays it's like if something uh is an overnight success or just like yeah that's what they they propagate yeah. now you know what i mean you know i think i was thinking about this the other day and i wrote this down too i might have wrote this down today about quickness i don't think quick is a bad thing i said quickly not in a rush mm. i want to mm. live my life quick but not in a rush i don't know if i want to live my life quickly not in a rush i mean i want to make decisions quickly not in a rush mm -hmm. yeah i want to make decisions quickly not in a rush yeah because if you like when you reached out to me, you, know, you were like, all right, let's get on this pod. Mm. I'm like, bet, let's do it. Can you do Monday? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not like, the, oh, a few weeks in event. No, like, yeah. what are you doing on Monday? Like, what are you doing now? Yeah, I like let's that. Let's do this now. And the best time to act on an idea is, most powerful time to act on an idea is when you get the idea. Bro, it's funny that you and me are so similar in that when you told me Monday, I was like, let's do it. Like, yeah, I, like do I, it. Did, I didn't want to mess around you know yeah. what i mean so yeah no it's funny and then danny was so gracious and i was like dude i know it's like really quick notice is that cool and he was like yeah bro it's all yeah. good and but uh yeah no that's 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 dope bro no yeah. that's uh but uh what would you say so i, I mean I, I we haven't really gone into exactly what, what you're doing for for a living now I, mm -hmm. I know that that you're doing stuff with kids and um, I know that you, you're working on your pod. If you want to, you know, talk about your 
pod talk about what you're doing with the youth yeah and, man. you know some of that kind of stuff so everybody yeah. kind of be in be in the know with what you're about yeah so i work as a stewardship coach okay and i'd say it is a form of life coaching stewardship is how we use things that aren't ours in the first place okay right and the bible talks a lot about stewardship so i help people who are in the process of stepping out of a shadow that's what i call it you know whether it be the shadow of a famous relative the shadow of a limiting limiting belief or something that has been holding them back for a long time that now they're finally stepping out of right so i help yeah. high net worth individuals who are looking for not necessarily a balance in their lives they're looking for a healthy relationship between um how to manage what it is that that god has given them to to steward right right and i've seen that in in a work-life balance as, as some people call it i've seen it in uh you know, spending time with your significant other and trying to balance the fact that, okay, like I got to have money to provide for my significant other and my family once we grow it out. So all these different dynamics play out. Um, I serve as a chaplain for the Miami Heat. So serving athletes in that way. And there's some, several other products that and services that I'm rolling out as a part of my business, Coach Kama. And the name Coach Kama came from a conversation I had with um, some teammates of mine. And we were talking about our earthly fathers being the commas to the heavenly father. Excuse me. Earthly, our earthly fathers being the comma to the period, which is our heavenly father. And it came to me. I was like, whoa, like, what if coaches were that way? You mm -hmm. know, I've heard so many guys talk to me and say that, hey, a coach promised me this. And he said, you're play here and do that and this and this. And then eventually that coach leaves or they get another job or they get fired or look at And all of a sudden the they player the, the player is like whatever. yo like just go yeah, i had lights. everything riding on this coach and like he just screwed me over and it's like yeah. no like that's life it happens coaches know what they need to do is pre is prepare their players in such a way that their players no longer need them mm. and you know there's no such thing as like with my clients right my clients don't need me you don't need coaching you want coaching right. you want to get better you want to improve a lot of things in life you don't need you only need very few things most things we want and the only reason people buy things is because they want to you know and it's not wrong to want what we want you know there's a certain context for wanting certain things still um you know just to go back to the original conversation we're having i feel like this is going to keep going back to the word because it always does um we can pray so much and ask god to put the desires that he has for us on our hearts mm. and then eventually we get them and then we keep praying, but we need to stop praying and start acting. Yeah. Cause prayer can become procrastination at a certain point. If we're not diligent yeah. about what God has given us. And this yeah. is what we're talking about. What as it pertains to, um, I call it in one of my, uh, my coaches calls it kicking down flimsy doors. Hmm. Right. Yeah. So he told a story once of, he told a story once of connecting with a, a potential client, a high profile client, played in the NBA. And uh, this guy had like a melt, meltdown on TV and he watched it happen. He's like, dang, like, I want to work with this guy. Has this idea, right? Mm -hmm. The next morning, he calls another coach up and he's like, yo, I need help connecting with this guy. He's like, boom. All right, cool. Let's do it. Go get homeboy who's staying at your place. It was another coach. Um, go wake him up. I think they're staying at a hotel or house, Airbnb, whatever mm. it is. Go wake him up and pull up to mine. Dude lived like an hour away. So he goes down and knocks on the door and he hears snoring. And he's like, oh, dang, like he's he's snoring. Like I hear behind the door. So he calls him back and he's like, yo, homeboy's downstairs. He's, he's asleep. He's like, man, like go, go knock on that door. Right. You know, so knocks on the door, opens the door, goes in, wakes him up. In five minutes, they're on the highway headed to meet this guy. Within an hour and a half, they're on the phone with the agent of this player, right? So it happened that quickly. A flimsy door almost got in the way of that yeah. opportunity. So how many yeah, opportunities yeah. do we have? And then we get that idea, that flimsy door that's like, nah, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do that. Nah, bro. Like, what if, what yeah. if, what if they think it's weird? Yeah, there's like a meme, right? And it's like somebody, like, there's like somebody uh, excavating, they're like digging, mm -hmm. and there's money on the other side. And then they, they like stop right at the last, like, yeah. like it's like, oh, I'm done. They I'd stop say. at the right, they you stop at the mean? last minute. And they're yeah, like, dude, yeah, like, yeah. 
Nah, I don't know if I'll do that. Yeah, but what's funny is that I feel like a lot of those times that that's like you know the evil one or something, something yeah. you know inside your head at that last moment trying to mm-hmm. trying to take away that that gift that that, yeah. that that you're supposed to get. Yeah. You know what I mean? I think FOMO, FOMO is a terrible teacher. Like yeah, it. I don't think we should be motivated by FOMO. I think we should never be motivated by fear. Fear is fear is always the worst teacher. We should be motivated by obedience. Yeah. To like, yo, God told me to dig here. I'm going to dig here. I'm going to keep digging here until I find what it is that I'm looking for. Maybe I have to put the shovel down and take a nap. Mm -hmm. I'm going to pick up the shovel and keep digging afterwards. And, uh, dude, so important. Yeah. So important. Yeah, man. That's good. I had no idea that you were a chaplain for the for the heat. That's mm-hmm. that's awesome. I just started bro. about a month how'd you fall into that? Oh, oh, so it's a new thing, bro. It's a new thing. Congratulations, it's, it's, bro. thank you, man. I appreciate that. I've actually, you know, like I, I love sports, and I've always like, you know, I'm a man of faith, and I'm always, I've always been curious about how someone becomes a chaplain and all that kind of stuff. So look, Dude, you did it, bro. You know what? It's it's interesting because pastor in the Bible, pastor is not a job. Pastor is a calling. Mm. Like you can go to school now and become a pastor, but that's not how it is in the Bible. Right. You're called to be a pastor. You're mm. called to be a prophet. You're called to be a teacher. You're called to be right. an evangelist. It's a calling. Once that phone rings, it's your phone that rings mm. and you pick it up. So an opportunity presented itself. And I'm like, dude, let's do it. It makes complete sense. You know, and a lot of times um, God makes it clear you know captain obvious clear like yeah like this is what you're meant to be doing and it's like oh shoot you're right that's exactly what i'm meant to be doing that's how i'm meant to be doing it and it's just super cool that's awesome man wow yeah congrats bro Thank i mean you, bro. yeah I, so it, can that be full time or is that part time so it's it's not a paid job oh it's not paid no it's oh. a form of service it's not a paid job I'm, I'm i don't know if it that's if it's that way in other organizations i just know that this is is not a paid job so I mean, whatever, man. I mean, not whatever, but I mean, you know, I think it's a beautiful form of service. So it is, bro. It's it's really special. You know, I've always had access to the heat arena mm. growing up. Yeah, you know, of course. I know the staff, the staff, some of the staff in the arena knew my mom when my mom was pregnant with me. So wow, it's it's cool to now be in the arena. And I, it's funny on the first day we were playing Boston. The first day, I was a chaplain. And I get my little lanyard, and uh, it's a paper lanyard, unlike the plastic ones the other guys have. So, walk on to the, to walk to go past the locker room, and I show the guy my lanyard. And he's like, "You can't come back here." And then he looks up and he looks at me. He's like, "Oh shoot, Trey!" Like, of course, you know. Opens That's the door hilarious, yo. Yeah. So, it's it's really a blessing, man. Like, it's a testament that any door that god opens no man can shut and every door he closes no man can walk through and it's just been so gracious he's been so gracious to me and um there's a verse that i teach from a lot exodus 4 2. it's when the lord asked moses what's in your hand and moses has a shepherd staff in his hand and god has given him the big vision for what he's called to do he's called to lead the people out of bondage out of Egypt right. into the promised land and he makes all these excuses as to why he can't be the person that doesn't he's like yo I, I stutter like I do this mm. he's like God I didn't ask you that that's flimsy doors getting mm. in the way I didn't ask you that what do you do yeah like what do you have in your hand and, and that reminds me of the uh the the proverbs it's or is it proverbs where it's like God shames uh the the humble or shades the wise uh, by raising exalting the humble or that's uh, uh the foolish but you know what I'm talking foolish? about, but, 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 it, but it just... I don't know if it says God shames, because God never shames. <laughs> but, but you know what I mean, though. It's yeah, like, it's about, like yeah. you, you, you get exalted, the... the, the oh, uh, the, he exalts the... <laughs> about the foolish, right? Something something along the lines of, like, he, he uses the foolish things of this world to prove, to confound the wise. Right, there you go. Yeah. There you go. Um, but what was I saying about, uh, yeah, Exodus 4-2, so, like... He's like, what's in your hand? He says he has the shepherd's staff in his hand. He's like, okay, throw it on the ground. Throws it on the ground and it turns into a snake. And then he runs from it. He's like, oh, shoot. And what the Lord spoke to me is that he didn't run because it turned into a snake. He wasn't afraid of snakes. He ran because it was something that he was familiar with his whole life. That when God told him to use it in a different way, he was like, oh, snap. I had this on me the whole time. So for me, like, I've had access to the heat arena my whole life. My whole life. I always have. There's never been a day in my life where I haven't had access to the Miami Heat. 
never. So now I have access and I can use that access in a different way and throwing it on the ground. is like, yo, this is wow. Like this is, mm-hmm. this is different, you know? Yeah. And it's been in my hands the whole time. And I put up a post today on Instagram and it was about how it can be a trip sometimes when we notice things that have been on us the whole entire time. We've had them our whole entire lives and we just haven't been using them in mm. necessarily the God, the way that God wanted us to use it. Or maybe yeah. it wasn't the right time. It could be a number of factors, like who knows, right? Yeah. Only God knows. And it's just, dang, like stepping back into old places, like stepping into Miami again after being away for six months and having the transformation transformational experience I had down in, in South America and Brazil and uh, to be back here in the states now like seeing miami the way it is seeing my friends the way it is you know when you go away for a long time it's not it's uh, sometimes in life and i've been in many seasons like this where i've changed more than the people who i've left yeah and it's like this thing like you know pretty pretty wild at the same time there's no comparison like they went through their own set of changes yeah and i think that's that's important too and i've I, I, I see that now and it's a re- new revelation that like anytime we leave people anytime we travel like we can't have this mindset that oh I'm going to come back a completely different person because you danger your da- you you can put yourself in danger of putting yourself on a pedestal above that person because like dang they haven't seen what I've seen mm. they don't know they don't get me mm-hmm. but it's like the you're, pride and arrogance the pride and arrogance is like yeah. who, who are you bro like who are you? God's taking you through yeah. some stuff who how do you know that God can't transform that person's life yeah. in those five and a half months as well. Yeah, God's think, doing things in their hearts as well. I think that's a really important thing about just anything in this spiritual journey. And, you know, if, if, if I feel like I'm getting better, I'm reading the word more, I'm doing this more, I'm, you know, fasting, or I'm doing anything yeah. better, I'm going to find myself interacting with folks. And if I go, hey, what are you up to? And, the, and they might say something that's the old me, right? I might, for a second, kind of look at them down on them, mm. negative. Yeah. Because I'll say, oh, ha, you're, you're still there. Huh? Yeah. But I have to catch myself because I yeah. know what you're talking about. That, that, that arrogance is pride. It's, yeah. so, it's something that I, I fall short yeah. with so much, you know, because it's like, yeah, you, you start thinking, oh, you know, these people are kind of yeah. below, uh, below me spiritually or whatever, yeah. you know, and that's just so ugly. And that's. By by thinking that you're demonstrating that you're not spiritually evolved. Yeah, evolved. It, it's 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 a maturity thing, bro. I think maturity is the the word of the year for for me for sure. Um, my pastor preached a sermon during at our during our conference last year about I think it was called Mature Me, and uh, he um, yeah he talked about you know Lord mature me this year. That was one of his prayers, and it's been one of my prayers as well. And I think. I think anytime we we walk with people, right, our prayers have to be communal. You know, like with family, like the most powerful prayers in the world are not just, they're not just about us; they're about family, mm. they're about the people around us. You know, I want my prayers to outlive me. And uh, when we we pray these prayers and say these things, like prayers are investments, right? And going back to what we were saying earlier about investments, like time plays a role within investments because the longer we keep an investment within a certain place, the more returns it's going to generate. If those returns are continuing to trend upwards, if we've mm-hmm. been diligent about how we've allocated those funds as it pertains to our prayers, right? Our prayers should outlive us and our prayers should generate bigger returns in the lives of other people. Like imagine today, right? If you put twenty thousand dollars in the S and P and you do it, you do it S P five hundred and you do it every single year for the next sixty years of your life, right? Let's say you live to a hundred years old. Let's say the next seventy years of your life, you're thirty, right? Mm. So like the next seventy years of your life, that's going to be a lot of money. At the same time, you may not spend that money because yeah. you know it's going to keep growing and growing and growing and growing. You may spend your life doing other things. Still, that money's going to be there for somebody else. And I think the way that we use tangible things here on earth, like cameras and microphones and our words and physical things, we need to invest them in such a way and take care of them and steward them in such a way that we leave 
more for those who are coming behind us, right? Mm. Like even if this guitar that's under the table, even if the guitar that's in the corner, let's say it decays within 100 years, right? Or 500 years or whatever. If that guitar decays, the music that I made with that guitar has to outlive that guitar itself. Mm. That's a good investment. Yeah. Did I play the song with this that's going to last mm -hmm. that long? That's how you should judge an investment. That's how you should judge a life. And that's what it means to store up treasures in heaven to get the most out of the life that you've been given. Yeah, hey, that's deep, man. I mean, I think if a lot of people thought about like what the legacy that they're leaving mm -hmm. as like <laughs> their the, the main forefront, like that's their main vision as they're navigating the day, I think that we would live in a different place, you know. Yeah, bro. It starts with us. Yeah. You know, I I I, I kind of try to get myself out of that mindset of I think I'm out of it to be honest with you mm. of thinking like dang if only we did this thing differently if right. only society did I'm not worried about society bro right. I know how the story ends right 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 I know I know that's good man. I know how that's the story good. ends and Jesus is like yo it's gonna get worse before it gets better so if he said that and his man never lied I'm like dang like I can't control global warming yeah, well, that's I'm gonna why be a better steward yeah for sure but like I can't control global warming bro that's why we got to be just good uh, stewards or soldiers of, of God's army, right? Exactly. Uh, uh, Alonzo, right? What was uh, the oh, name? Yeah. Of Alonzo means ready for battle. Ready for battle. Ready and for we got battle. Michael right here, the archangel. Exactly. You bro. know? We we're, strapped. We in this we're strapped, strapped, bro. We're ready to. Uh, My man over there <laughs> eating creatine. <laughs> <laughs> he, he's going he's gonna to put a, a demon in the headlock. Uh -huh. You know what I'm saying? But, uh, yeah, no, I, bro, thanks a lot for this conversation. Yeah, it's my um, pleasure. You know, I think that, uh, yeah, I, I'm, I'm really curious now, since since you're a uh, uh, chaplain now, yeah. you know, maybe, you know, in a, in a year or maybe six months, you know, we chat, chat again and see how, do it, let's do it. how you've been, you know, I'm sure you'll have a lot of cool experiences uh -huh. from that, you know. Yeah, for sure, so, bro, for sure. Yeah, thanks bro. a lot for hopping on the Faith and Base podcast. Before we wrap up, is there anything else that – you like to say or p places that someone could find you or coach comma uh, podcast yeah check me out on youtube at the morning show pod and also on instagram at coach comma and coming to you some other places soon so if you follow me in those two places you'll definitely find out more info and uh yeah man i think that's it that's all all right thanks a lot guys thanks for tuning into faith and base have a blessed day peace, peace.